Hello everyone, welcome back to the Greenwood and Milner Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Today Sam and I are joined by a man who has scored just under 100 Premier League goals in his career for Leeds, Middlesbrough and Newcastle United. He has also played in the Champions League for Leeds United in the early two, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And he's also made 43 appearances for his national side, Australia. It is a big welcome to the former Newcastle United striker, Mark Paducan. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. Mark, I have to ask, a coffee shop in Croatia, how does that happen after playing so many years in, Premier, in the Premier League and playing for Celtic as well, of course? Oh, mate, I'm just, I'm just a big uh, lover of coffee, to be honest. Everywhere I've been around the world or whatever, I used to always try to look for the best coffee in that sort of place or whatever. And uh, uh, I wouldn't say it was like a ambition or something like that to, to open up one but it it just happened me and my missus opened up a cafe and uh to be honest it's a lot of work <laughs> was that was that sort of always I, I know you said it wasn't it wasn't the plan but it was it always a thing where coaching wasn't an avenue you wanted to go down or you wanted to get away from football after you were playing what was what was your thoughts when you were coming to the end of your playing career well, to be honest, I mean, if you follow my story from the start, I mean, I, I left uh, I left home when I was 16 to, to go to the Australian Institute of Sport for a couple of years. Then I came back for for a couple of years in Melbourne. I played and and I left uh, I left basically I left home when I was 19. And uh, so football has been, uh, you know, since a young age, it's just been my whole life you know what i mean everything revolved around football and honestly i i wanted to consciously get away from uh from that and uh for a little bit and then reassess you know how things are going it certainly seems like a lifestyle that a lot of people could get used to potentially just hiding themselves away having the coffee shop let everything just just flow which it seems like an amazing career to turn into now but if I take you back to your football career, and we'll talk about your time at Newcastle United, of course, you did incredibly well just down the road at Middlesbrough. Um, how difficult of a decision was it to leave Middlesbrough to join Newcastle? Of course, it, I know Middlesbrough and Newcastle, there is that rivalry, I suppose, the North East rivalry. Was it a difficult decision in hindsight? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. I mean, I was uh, at Middlesbrough. My contract was coming to an end and, uh, you know, there was... There was talk about re-signing and uh, in the end uh, I was uh, basically waiting to the, to the last day of the season where they made me an offer. But by then Newcastle was, uh, not just Newcastle, there was other clubs that, are, that were interested, that were showing a lot of interest. And uh, to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with the way that it was handled from Middlesbrough's, uh, like from the point, point of view of the club. And... Uh, and that was that. It, it came about. Newcastle was very keen, and I thought maybe I could stay. You know, I've been, I lived up in the northeast for quite a while, and or uh, well, the north, and then and then with with Middlesbrough as well. And uh, and I thought maybe you know I, I enjoyed living up that area, and I thought you know the kids. I had a couple of kids then at the time, and they were in school, and all, and I thought that I could do do it by by travelling, but. It didn't work out, so I, I, in the end, I moved up to uh, Newcastle. As you would do, because it's just better up there. It is. It's very beautiful. I mean, Newcastle is such a beautiful place. I didn't expect. I, I mean, I lived in Leeds for for a long time, for seven years, and uh, well, while I was in Middlesbrough, I was living in New because I lived in Weatherby, north of Leeds, so it was about an hour away. And um, but then when I got to Newcastle, I mean, it's a stunning place. I mean, the beaches over there, you know, I, I know you can't use them all year round and all that, but it's a very beautiful part, part of the world. Not many people know that. No, it, it absolutely is. I mean, I just want to ask a brief question about your time at Leeds because you played alongside another man who used to play for both teams, Newcastle and Leeds. And I always ask players who have played with David Batty about if they have a story or a memory of David Batty, because he's a cult hero. Everyone loved David Batty, but he's one of them characters that, similar to yourself, wanted nothing to do with football after they finished playing. <laughs> what was he like? What was he like to work with day in day out? I loved David. David Batty was 
top top bloke. I mean, I, I enjoyed. He was a little bit older than 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 me at the time, and he was sort of coming towards the end of his career. But uh, lovely bloke. Enjoyed, uh, you know, his company around. Uh, I mean, he was a family man, you know, pro proper proper local lad, and uh, you know, from uh, you know, just down to earth type of a bloke. And uh, you know, he. Uh, I think, and, that, and that's what happened to me later on as well. Like when you get a little bit older, you start. When you're younger, you know your football is everything, you know, for you. And then once you get towards, you know, your kids start coming, and you realise that, you know, you've got other sort of uh, commitments as well. And he was at that stage when I was at Leeds. Um, that he was, you know, as soon as he he spent as much time as he could with his with his family. He just loved being at home, you know. And you know, after after having such a a great career he had. I mean, he was down in Blackburn and 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 with you guys. I mean, with, with Newcastle and uh, and also Leeds. I mean, there's a lot of travelling involved. There's a lot of uh, you know commitments with that. And and I and I you know later on I understood that. You know, when I was younger I didn't really understand that, but later on I understood why he, you know, he was he was like, you know, he sort of you know loved spending time with his family. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. I think everybody can appreciate that side of. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you finish your career, you want to try and spend as much more as much time as with, with your family as possible. And um, you obviously you arrived at Newcastle uh, with Big Sam. Sam Allardyce is the manager of the football club. And um, mm -hmm. you worked with so many different managers in a two year uh, spell at Newcastle United. Now, so it must have been um, interesting to say the least. But what was it like working with uh, with Sam Allardyce and? Was he your kind of manager, or did you did you hit it off? What was the relationship like? I thought Sam was a top bloke. You know, I really liked Sam as a as a as a bloke. Uh, you know, around you know around training ground, he was uh, he's more of an old school type of a bloke, which which I prefer um, that type. Um, when it comes to, I think I think maybe for me, I don't think he uh, utilized the type of players he had the way he did i mean he came from he came from bolton where they played a certain style of football and i think when he came to newcastle a lot of the players uh, uh sort of thought that maybe we should be playing a little bit of a different type of football because of the the quality we had in that in that team you know um but with regards to sam as a as a bloke and uh, you know as a character whatever top i can only say positive positive things. I mean, not many Newcastle fans can, especially after a stint at Sunderland as well. But um, I think I think with you, Mark, it was right player, wrong time, because those two years you spent with us were crazy, like none of which was obviously down to the players, really, yeah. because new ownership with, at that time, under Mike Ashley and the merry-go-round of managers. Uh, what was, from a player's perspective... I can't imagine it wouldn't have been a great experience playing for Newcastle in those two years you spent there. Uh, look, it, it was like that. I mean, it was uh, it was a very weird situation, a lot of turmoil, not 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 only on, in 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 the club but also you know in the world. You know, there was the big financial crisis happened at the time, and I think Mike Ashley, you know, probably bought the club before then and thought you know he's going to invest money into, it, and all of a sudden. You know, all of his value probably fell down as well. His companies and all that, and so it was. It was instead of investing into the team, I think it went the other way around overnight. You know, and um, maybe you know he was a little bit cautious. Since you know, instead of buying uh, more players and whatever, investing into the team, I think he became more cautious. And then, you know, changing that many managers um, in such a small. Uh, period of time it was it was very unsettling it was very unsettling and that happens that happens everywhere i think you know if 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 you if you keep chopping and changing everybody you, there's, it's difficult to get any type of uh, consistency you know on the field so it was it was a it was a weird situation you're right i think right player you know i would i would have loved to have come there you know when i was a little bit more a bit younger or, or a bit fitter because you know the atmosphere over there, and the way that the way that the the the, um, the town it just the people are just crazy for the for the club, you know. And I and I I um I sort of got a glimpse of that 
when I was at Celtic as well, you know, because that's that's a very I, I, I can compare the two clubs, you know, the 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 whole town with you know with that stadium with that atmosphere, and I remember coming with Leeds uh, up to uh, up to Newcastle, and it was always there were always good games mm -hmm. when we used to play against uh, uh, Newcastle, but especially. Especially, I remember, you know, when 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 we'd be under the cosh a little bit, and the crowd get gets behind the, the Newcastle players, it was just very difficult to 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 get out of that situation in terms of, you know, like if you're if you're getting bombarded left, right, and center, and then the crowds on top, it's it's it really is like an like an extra player. So when I was coming up there, I thought, you know, I'd like a little bit of that sort of a you know that type of a atmosphere and and whatever and. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the situation was how it was, and uh, and it ended up differently. It, it did, but it started actually very, very well for you, Mark. Obviously, your first goal for Newcastle, of course, had to be at the Riverside against Middlesbrough, and it was one of the a really, really good finish as well. And you were, your, your celebration was obviously quite respectful, but I bet it was, let's just say, a lot of stick of being polite from the Middlesbrough fans in regards to you, but. It, 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 I think I just showed the type of player you are. You, you were, Mark. It didn't really matter the occasion. You came up with some big moments, and then you followed that up with two goals against West Ham at, again at St James's Park in front of the, that atmosphere that you, you talk about. So the actual start of it actually was was very very good, if we're being honest. Yeah, I was uh, I was very very uh, excited. Uh, you know, obviously, look coming to the to the Riverside. I, I had some really good memories there with with. Uh, with Borough and uh, I was very respectful of uh, of the club and also of the um, you know of the players. They're, they're all my mates over there. So when you go back and you you, you know obviously you want to score, you want to do well every time you go out on the pitch. You want to do well and you want to you know, as a striker you want to score. And uh, that goal was actually you know I I was really wrapped about that goal because it was my first goal for for the club and and it's. Um, it's always, you know, what it's like as a striker. Sometimes it takes a while to get that first one, but once it does, it usually starts. Uh, you know, you sort of let let off some sort of a, you know, the, the pressure comes off you, and uh, for some reason they, it's easier to score afterwards. But um, um, yeah, that 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 first game, as I said, after that goal I scored, I you know I was conscious of the fact that I, I you know I'd, I'd left Middlesbrough just before then and. Uh, but then you know at St James's Park to score those those that that brace you know against West Ham, um, yeah, something special, really special. That's why that's what that's what you play football for. That feeling. I mean, I, I remember that Borough goal so well because it was like classic Vaduka goal, strength, quality, finish. It was obvious you didn't really want to celebrate because, as you say, being respectful and whatnot. But I sort of remember then all your new teammates just kind of jumped on you but how hard is it just to kind of again be respectful but at the same time like you say you're there to do a job you're a striker you've got to get off to a good start goal scoring you're all new you're, you're being swamped by your new teammates you want to let a bit out don't you really oh definitely i mean <laughs> I mean, first goal for the club. It's uh, you know, as I said, you want to get off the mark as soon as possible, and that against my old club, it's uh, you know, it's always like that. It's, it's uh, sod's law. Is that what, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So it had to be against uh, against them. But no, I was I was wrapped. You know, I was I was. I think it was a draw. The game was it? Or did we win? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was disappointed that we didn't win the game at the end of the, at the end of the. Uh, at the end of the day, because uh, um, yeah, but as I said, you know, it was good to because you know what it's like. Every time you come to a new club, you've got to uh, you've got to prove yourself wherever it is. You know, it's not uh, that's what football's about. You know, wherever you go, you've got to prove yourself that you can do the job and in front of your your new teammates as well, because everybody's looking at you, especially as a striker, to to uh, you know um, to make the difference. So I was very, very, very happy that day. When you look at that squad in particular, Mark, it was a squad that had some very big names in, in that squad and some amazing football players. If you talk about individual talent and, you know, I, th I think if there was, as you mentioned, a bit more stability behind the scenes, I think we probably would have seen a lot more positive results in Newcastle. But was there a particular player that you trained with at your spell at Newcastle? You went, wow, I didn't realise he was that good, if that makes sense, even though 
maybe because you played with so many fantastic players in your career, did you did you think, wow, that that player stood out for me? Oh, we had a we had a we had a few good players. I mean. Michael Owen was obviously there, but he was he had problems with injuries as well. Um, Habib Bay was a very good player. I really enjoyed playing with Habib. Um, Martins, Oberfemi Martins. I mean, he was. Uh, I wouldn't say that there's one. There's one that that really you know stood out. But uh, when I think back at the at the team, there was uh, like Oberfemi. He was so unpre unpredictable. You know, when he mm -hmm. got the ball. You know, we didn't know what he was going to do. I don't think he even knew what he was going to do. But that's, <laughs> that's the beauty of it because, you know, very unpredictable and could, uh, you know, so much pace, so much, uh, you know, that I think that unpredictability to, uh, for, for me with him was uh, was, was something, uh, you know, something that, that really made, made a difference for him, you know, as a player. Um, also... Uh, I, you know, I was happy to be back with James Milner, you know, James Mil and, and mm. Stevie as well, because we were together. I, I remember when James played his first game at Leeds, he was only 16 years old and, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a lovely, lovely guy. Uh, you know, I remember, I remember as a kid, but um, now he's, he's still playing. Can you believe it's, it? It's ridiculous. It's crazy. I know. I know. What an I, engine that guy has. Yeah, and he, and not just that, he's he's such a down to earth bloke and uh, you know really nice guy, and I'm so you know I'm I'm so happy for him that he's had a great career. Absolutely. Um, obviously, when Big Sam um, was dismissed as manager, the King returned for his second stint. What was the feeling like when the news was announced? that Kevin Keegan would be would be coming back and you say you liked an old school manager Kevin was I'm guessing was that a sort of manager as well exactly top up top I mean I loved working with Kevin Keegan he's top my top of manager you know he he was a top player uh, in his day uh, for me I enjoyed him as a as a bloke I thought he was a top bloke and I enjoyed the way that he wanted us to play you know he he just wanted us to play top Top football, you know, attacking football uh, to utilize the players that he had and uh, and to play some entertaining football, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, little tips that he would give during training sessions for me as a striker was something something that you know priceless, you know. And Terry Mack was there as well in the background. Terry yeah. Mack, was, he was with me at um, at Celtic. He was my assistant at Celtic. Yeah. So, so so it was good to hook up with Terry Mack as well and um and Kevin. And it was like it was, for me it was it was it was really good. It was a really good move for me. I was gonna say because Kevin tried to uh, tried a different formation, he tried four three three with yourself, Oda Femi and, and Mike Lowen up front. Yeah. It seemed to work for the, the short spell that it, it, that you that you had together as, as a three up front. I can remember the game against Reading where you all scored on the on the same occasion. So mm -hmm. I, I, do you think that Kevin was trying to start something where if he could just, you know, again get a get a few uh, a few games out with the, the three of you up front because you've all got so much talent, like it's God knows how much you would have all been worth in your at your prime because it, it would have been astronomical now when you think about it. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, that formation that he played uh, with all of us, and, I, and there was Habib on the on the right. He would he would join in as well. He was quick. He knew how to play it, play it into us, and and um, uh, that that formation for me was was top, you know. And especially the period when when Kevin came, and then towards the end of the season, I thought we did really really well. We mm -hmm. started gaining momentum, and. Uh, the way uh, you know the way we played was entertaining, you know, and I think the fans enjoyed that as well, you know, for that brief period. Yeah, it looked like everything was was set for us to to kick on that next season. Um, I always remember Kevin Keegan tells the story of how he wanted to sign someone you know very well, um, Luka Modric. Was there any communication with you at the time with you yourself and Luca, or were you aware? Was the dressing room kind of aware that that was a player he wanted to bring in? But ultimately, the ownership said no. Luca Modric couldn't play in the Premier League because he's too small. Ballon d'Or winner, you know. Oh really? Really, I didn't know that. Really? I was, no, I didn't know. I didn't know that. That's what that, that's what happened in the end. Yeah. yeah. So Kevin tells the story that 
the deal was ultimately pretty much done. Modric was going to come to Newcastle. Um, and then one of Mike Ashley's stooges at the last minute said, no, we don't think Luca can cut it in the Premier League. He'll be, he's not, he'll be too small. So they undercut the bid. And then, lo and behold, he goes to Tottenham, Real Madrid. Oh, right. Didn't do too badly for himself. No, he's, he's, he was struggling afterwards, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, I'm oh, guessing Kevin didn't let that frustration on to 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 you players in the dressing room. No, 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 no. I mean, I remember I, now when you said it, I vaguely remember there was some talk about uh, Luca coming, but um, you know, he was an unknown uh, at the time. Mm. You know? Now it's, it's easy to talk now, but at that time he was an unknown. He was playing in Dinamo Zagreb, which was my old club in Croatia, and. Um, you know, you know. Sometimes those things go either way. You know, when when you, you had situations where you buy big big player names, for example, Veron at uh, at uh, what is it, Man U, and he struggled uh, to, uh, to 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 make to, to make the difference here in the in the Premier League in Italy. He was doing really well. So, to be honest, there wasn't that much talk about it. now. You know, now obviously, twenty years later, it's uh, we've seen what sort of career Lucas had, and uh, you know. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, as they say, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but at that time, you know, obviously he would have been a great, uh, a great, uh, what is it called, addition to the to the team for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been Just interesting to see. It would have been interesting to see Luka Modric in the Newcastle shirt, but you never know. He might come back for one season. Who knows? <laughs> when he's <laughs> enough, when it's Champions League with Real Madrid, you never know. He might want to come to the North East. Who knows? But um, I have to ask Mark, obviously. As Sam rightly says, it was kind of that second season, obviously your last season at the football club, it, it ultimately ended in relegation. We obviously had Joe Kinnear who came in. Um, I know obviously how I know I know he's really old club. school. I'm guessing you love Joe Kinnear. <laughs> I think he was a bit too old school for me, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't I'm not obviously I don't want to Obviously, disrespect Joe Kinnear anyway. Obviously, I know he's obviously be, obviously going through a lot of health issues at the minute as well. So I don't want to go too deep on him, but Alan Shearer comes in and tries to save the day. And I've got a quote from uh, Alan when he was talking about you, Mark. He said, your attitude was amazing. He worked his socks off. He tried to get back in the team because he did obviously have a couple of bad injuries, especially um, in, in, the, in the latter season. And he said he tried so hard to try and help the team. If he could get that one goal that would keep us up, it, that would be amazing. But he managed you to did. get back. Which I did. I, I did get yeah. the one against Fulham. And, uh, yeah. Well, Mark, this know. this is this has been playing. On. I was at that game that day, um, and that that I, I, it still gives me night. I wake up in the middle of the night, sweating, cussing Howard Webb. You, it, it was a perfectly fine goal. It was a goal exactly. I, I don't I don't get how that that was disallowed. You know, same thing. You know those those moments. They they they. Uh, you know when 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 when. Um, um Shira came in when Alan Alan came in. Uh you know, for, for months uh I, I had issues with my Achilles uh tendon and um and I was supposed to go for an operation on it. I mean they were talking about it. But one, once Joe Kinnear came in, he sort of he was he what he really didn't he wasn't counting on me at all, you know what I mean? And I was in the thing I was trying to get back. Every time I got back, I, I'd get like at training, whatever, and I'd get back and uh you know, I'd flare it would flare up again. You know, because this it's, with the tendon, it's quite it's a quite sensitive thing. You know, um, and uh, what happened was, uh, I think Joe Kinnear was sort of I don't know I don't I don't think he was counting on me at all. You know, but I, as I said, I uh, when when um, when Alan came in, like he said to me, look, can you can you get can you can you get fit? I said I'll do I'll do my best. I'll like I'll I'll you know I'll, I'll work my ass off and I'll and I'll try to try to do it. You know, the thing is, what happens is if you if you haven't got that game match fitness, it's it's very very difficult to um, because what happens is when you when you have a, a, a problem with sort of your one side of your one leg, whatever you compensate with the other leg, and then different muscles, you know, start. You pulling different muscles and all that, so it's it's it was very very to be honest, it was very frustrating for myself and whatever. But 
when, when he came in, I thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my everything, and I, you know, I, I worked, 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 and uh, you know, to get myself to some sort of level where I can play. And then uh, I think it was what was the last game, last five games of the season, I I, I played, and um, and uh, and then and then it came to that last game, whatever, and uh, and and that was that, that was that. Yeah, it was. Where was VAR? That's what I wanted. At. Where was VAR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could, could like you, you sort of know as a forward. Yeah, I've, I've, I've. I, well, I don't, I don't think. Or... I think he pulled what. What he's the, the the excuse was that I think Kevin Nolan was on somebody, fouled somebody. He wasn't. He wasn't. I don't think it was a foul. Me fouling anybody, but that was the sort of explanation later on. But when I see the replays now, I can't. I can't for the life of me see what. Uh, you know what where the foul was no i know it, it, it's I, I really should let it go because it bothers me to this day uh, <laughs> because that that would have been i mean we lost one nil that you know would have got us the point that ultimately we needed to to stay up like players in that dressing room from the outside looking in didn't want to know some not all. You were the you were the one for, with that quote Johnny just read there from from Shearer. Obviously, did care, did want to be there. You say yourself, worked your ass off to get back fit for the final games, but there was other players that didn't have that same attitude. What are you thinking when you're sat ready to go out for a game and there's some players that just don't care because the situation it seemed was frustrating because we could have should have got out of that mess. Well, look, uh, you know, I was I was in a relegation battle with Leeds as well, mm. uh, and in the end we got relegated. And uh, in that in that situation, there's a lot of pressure on on people. You know, there's a lot of pressure on players, coaches, and the whole the whole thing. Oh, and uh, sometimes it's easier to just uh, for people to say, uh, you know, you know, to sort of stay away from that. You know what I mean? It's. Uh, you know, it's not just Newcastle. Everywhere things like you know, in clubs that happens. But you know, it's easier for you know to to to, to sort of I don't know what to make excuses or whatever. You know, but I, I at the you know the same thing happened at Leeds. You know, I I don't know what, what what I can say. You know, there was a, there was it's very frustrating because you can't come you can't come out and say anything against uh, your teammates in the press so things 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 are happening behind the scenes nobody knows what what's you know what's going on really but you know all you can do really is control is is on the field if you get if you're if you're in the team you know what i mean and you can you can you can do your best in that you know because what happens is in those situations you find out which are which are proper characters you know which mm. people you'd want to be in the trenches with you know Absolutely. That, that's what happens, you know. And uh, when Alan when Alan came, I felt that he sort of, uh, for me, he believed in me. Before that, you know, I, before that, it wasn't the case. And and uh, and I I obviously wanted to repay that, you know. I wanted to repay that that belief that he had. And, and I know I knew that if I could get fit, that I could make the difference, definitely. Um. And uh, you know, I wanted to, as I said, I, I didn't want to get relegated again. You no. know, as a, as a, you know, even, even though for most of the season, I, you know, I, I didn't play a big part in most of the season. I kept getting injured, coming back, coming back, and all that. But um, you know, I thought to myself, uh, you know, I've, I've got to give everything if I'm if I'm gonna if if we're gonna stay up, I've got to give every, everything, and you know, and hopefully it, it can happen. But, but it yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to share a trench with Michael Owen either. Oh. <laughs> Still up front from Samuel there, but um, <laughs> I, I, the, reason, the, the reason the reason why I mentioned well, I don't know. Is... I, I haven't I, I haven't been following anything, so I don't I don't I don't know what's been said or what hasn't been said or whatever. So yeah, like yeah. in the last uh, afterwards and that. So yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll leave that. We'll, we'll leave that with Sam anyway. But the, the reason why I mentioned a particular quote, Mark, is because. You could see that you were a big game player because you mentioned other relegation battles with Leeds, like the, the, the one occasion where you did stay. Obviously, you scored the winner at Highbury against mm -hmm. Arsenal, which was a fantastic finish. And then you 
obviously played a massive part in the win against Middlesbrough. <laughs> that 3-1 win where I think Alan actually gave you his man of the match that day. He said you were absolutely superb for, for him that day. So it, it, yeah, it, it shows it. it shows what it shows what you meant, uh, what you meant to him as a player. If Alan had still had the job, say after that season in the championship, and he said to you, Mark, can you give me another season? Could you would you would you sign for me for another season? Do you, I know obviously you retired at the end of that season, but do you think you may have been able to be persuaded to have another season with Alan as manager? If I, if if, I, if it was at Newcastle, I would have stayed. You know, uh, if if it was Newcastle, I would have stayed. Uh, if he said that, you know, and I was hoping that that was going to happen. Uh, but again, again, it was it was it was about uh, injury because you, you know what what, what was ha what happened was because of this uh, injury I had to they the, like because of this Achilles stuff they started putting this stuff in my boots you know which was like uh, they they were lifting lifting the, the boots upwards and you know like they're putting these things in there so that they wouldn't be under that much pressure and I struggled to do, I didn't like playing with that. You know, because it, it made me feel it, it, it didn't feel good. You know, I mean, it didn't feel natural. So it was, it, it was, uh, it was a. It, you know, if if I was okay physically, I would I would have loved to stay. You know, I, I, when I went to Newcastle, I bought myself a house. The kids started going to school. My my oldest now, he started going to school. My 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 third son was born there in Newcastle. So, I actually loved you know living in in the place there. You know, and uh, to be honest, I was a little bit sick of uh, chopping and changing and moving and all that. As I said, people people you know only know from my time in England. But you know, I moved from Australia to Croatia, then to Croatia to uh, Glasgow, then. Glasgow to Leeds and then Leeds to you know Middlesbrough and I was a little bit sick of that. If if I if I uh, if 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 Alan stayed and and uh, uh, and he offered me a new deal, I would you know I would have said it. Obviously, depending on how I was physically, you know, I would have I would have definitely stayed. With 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 Alan, obviously it was. A, a mess of a season from various managerial appointments, but with it being his first job, and it was it was just down to that emotional connection with the club and Alan Shearer. But had we got him in earlier, do you think we'd have been okay and stayed up? Was he? Did you did you seem like he was going to make a decent manager? Because he often pokes fun at himself now and says that he failed and whatnot. But I I don't think it was that simple. I thought he had the makings oh. of a good manager. I think so as well. I mean, I think definitely respect is respected by everybody. That's half the job, you know. He's respected not just because of what he's done. I mean, he's, you know, that is a big thing as well. But also because of his his character. You know, he was also one of those guys who, you know, was never. You know, he was always there, uh, ready to take the. Um, how can you say take the punches? You know, for the for the club and and usually, what happens is in I think in teams in football. If you see uh, somebody who's a, who's a character who's, who's ready to stand up, for, not, not for the club but also for the players as well for the team, then they get that extra bit of you know percentage out of out of each team. You know what I'm saying? And I think he he definitely had the experience. And you know, I I you know I'm I'm, I'm a little bit um, uh, maybe uh, I wouldn't say disappointed, but I would say. I would have liked to have seen him, uh, you know, not just take that first bit of, you know, that he had. You know, he only had what, how many, a couple of months or something mm. at the end of last season, and you know, it's an unrealistic situation to start managing like that. You know what I mean? If he, if I would, have, he would, have, I would have liked to see him as a manager. Obviously, it's up to him. You know, he knows what's best for himself. But I would have liked to have seen him. I think he, he had much more more in him as a manager. You know. To come in a situation like that and to base your whole managerial career over that, it's it's sort of a little bit not really realistic. When you were at Leeds, what was he like to play against? Obviously, I know you're at opposite ends of the pitch, but did did uh, the Leeds defenders know they were in for a game? Yeah, I mean, Alan was always uh, he was always uh, physical. He's a he, he's a natural leader on the field, you know, and and that that's that's something. You know, he's a big presence up front, you know. 
um, always dangerous, always, you know, his finishing ability was unbelievable, you know. Really, you know, when you see you've got players who maybe are maybe technically more gifted than what he is, but he was always in the position to score, like a natural goal scorer, natural goal scorer. And, you know, those sort of players are, are hard, to, hard to come by, you know. And, and, and just as a presence, you know, everybody, you know, when you have a presence like that up front, uh, auto, automatically you command respect, you know, from other players as well. So obviously our defenders were, <laughs> were probably not sleeping well before before the game when they had to mark him, you know, so. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they, um, it would have been a difficult night's sleep. It's funny that you mentioned difficult night's sleep because I was just telling Sam a story. Um, before we started, Mark, about the morning leading up to your uh, your four goals against Liverpool, where you were woken up a couple of times through the night, <laughs> yeah. shall we say, and you were thinking to yourself, I'm not going to have a good game today, or if I don't have a good game today, it, it, I'll, I'll blame other people. Could you just just tell people about this story? Because I think it's absolutely brilliant. Well, yeah, because it was my missus. It was, uh, what it was, was uh, we, it was one of, it was one of the first games where it was, uh, you know, the early morning kickoffs. I think it was 11 o'clock kickoff against Liverpool and we, we were staying in a, a hotel in Leeds in the Malmaison and uh, it was actually Guy Fawkes time, you know, when it was all the firecrackers were going off and that, you know, that, that whole week leading up there was always firecrackers and, and I had a Rottweiler, uh, we, were, uh, my, we were living up in Weatherby and we were living in like a village there and um, the, the Rottweiler kept barking because you know she was scared uh, of all the firecrackers and that and i was in the room with uh with our third goalkeeper uh danny Moss, which is also an aussie aussie guy and um um you know like so so when it's an early kickoff you've got to wake up like really early you know to have a pre-match meal and whatever by the time 11 o'clock you're you know you can't eat you know half an hour before the game so Two o'clock in the morning, my missus is calling me. The, the dog's barking, and she goes, uh, "She goes, uh, you know, she's scared." I said, "I said, oh, you know, first time I said it, everything will be fine. No, no worries. You know, she, she's just scared of the firecrackers. You know, the fireworks." And um, and so I go back to sleep, and she woke up me and the and the goalkeeper as well. And an hour later, she calls again, and like the dog's barking crazy, you know, and I go. I go, if I have a shocker tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, if I have a shocker tomorrow, and then I said, after the game, I said, you can wake me up whenever you want, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the thing, you know, in football. You can do everything right. You can prepare everything right, you know, and nothing goes right for you. And then sometimes you can, you know, you don't prepare properly how, you know, how you, how, you know, by the book that you should. And, you know, you have a, you have a ripper. Yeah, certainly. certainly. Four goals in one game, incredible. Um, after talking about Newcastle United right now, Mark, um, it's, it's, an inc it's an incredible transformation sitting just outside the Champions League places. Um, when Newcastle and, and Leeds, especially when you, when you at Leeds for fighting for those places for a couple of seasons. Um, what do you make of this new Newcastle United right now under Eddie Howe? It's great. It's exciting. It's exciting stuff. I mean, to see the way that uh, the team in the last, what, year and a half? Is it a year and a half? Two years? Yeah. Ago, I mean, and to be honest, I, I mean, they haven't really spent, I wouldn't say like when you compare to a Man City, obviously now, you know, Newcastle's rich club now, you know. But, um, <laughs> Uh, they haven't really spent on, you know, you, when you look at Man City, you've got somebody like Calvin Phillips who's sitting on the bench. Uh, I don't think, has he, has he played in the game yet? Uh, over there? Not really. Right? Played more for England. Yeah, I read I read something that is um, that Leeds is looking to get him back again or something like that. But um, the, the, the team has gelled really, really well and they're very resilient as a team and, uh, you know, they've got some good players um, and exciting stuff exciting stuff for newcastle i mean it's been a long time since since the days where newcastle was in the champions league and i and i played against them here when i was in dinner was Zagreb in the 90s you know 97 we played against against them in the qualifier and um but it's great for the town you know it's great for the town and for the for the fans they 
you know, and it's not not only that, it's great that, you know, a club up in the northeast, you know, I have a soft spot for the north of England and um, um, it's great to see them doing well. Do you ever, uh, well, have you have you made time to to come back every now and again to, to the north and maybe taking a game, whether it's Leeds or, or, or Newcastle, or are you uh, quite happy in the middle of nowhere in your yeah. in your calf? No, I was I was uh, I actually came came uh, to Leeds. Um, Dominic Matteo had some sort of a charity event at Leeds, and he invited me over. So I, I came for a couple of games. Uh, that was last season, towards the end of last season, and uh, it's nice. It was nice. I didn't get a chance to get up to Newcastle, but uh, you know, I, I went to all the places that I used to, you know, met up with old friends. Um, went to the places where I used to uh, hang out and uh, and where I used to live as well, and it's it's great. I mean, England England's a huge part of my my life and uh, and my family as well. Like as I said, my kids were born there and. I've got one Geordie here. My youngest kid is a Geordie, so um, and he's a Newcastle fan as well. So, oh, has he got the accent? He's born in in Saint James's. Uh, is it Saint James's? No. Yes, it, uh, I'm trying to think what the hospital is called. Uh, the RVI. Yeah. What is it? What is it? The RVI. 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 Yeah, that's right. So he's a Newcastle fan, you know. And uh, I've got I've, I've got two boys that are born in Leeds, and and they're Leeds fans, so they're not having a good time like last few years. So at least he can at least he can brag, brag to all these Man City. My 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 youngest son can now brag to all these Man City and Liverpool fans that and Man United that uh, that that he's that he's following a good club. He certainly is. He certainly is. Just finally, Mark, um, where will Newcastle be in five years' time, and do you think they can actually reach the Champions League this season? I think they can. I think the way that they're playing, that they they can definitely get up there. Um, I mean, there's some tough competition up there, but um, you know, I, I think that I can't see a reason why not. You know, in five in five years' time, you know, who knows? You know, if more money is being put in, and obviously there's a, you know, there's they've got a pretty big uh, sack of cash over there at the moment. Um, why not exciting you know and uh, and, and and i'm you know i'm, I'm happy that uh, you know having spent time up there with uh, with the geordies and that uh, I, it's it's top top passion for a club you know a very passionate club so the fans definitely deserve it and uh, you know um you know i'm happy they're doing well yeah well, I'm, so, I'm sure the next time that you Come back to England. You have to pop up the road from Leeds and go to Newcastle and just uh, <laughs> pop and say hello to the, uh, the old places around uh, around Newcastle that you enjoyed there as well. Yeah, I will do that. We'll do that. I, I mean, you know, I'll try to. I'd like to maybe spend a little bit more time. This was a short trip, so but I'll have to go with the family for a bit longer and go go to all the places that we used to hang out. Take your youngest Take to a game. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll do that actually. I'll, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. So. Um, yeah, it's yeah, just, just finding a, a good time to do it. Usually, they've got school during that time, you know. Yeah, and ho ho hopefully, we can hopefully you can come up for Newcastle versus Leeds at St James in the Premier League next season. If Leeds can, I hope so. Leeds can stay up. I hope so. I hope so. I'd love that. I'd love to see them both up there. You know, all the clubs that I played for, you know, even Middlesbrough, I'd love to see them back in the Premier League. It's a great club as well. 100%. It's Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure talking all things Newcastle United and a little bit of Leeds as well. I'm sure a couple mm -hmm. of the Leeds fans will might pop in and say hello in regards to this podcast as well. And you've certainly obviously been fantastic for every club you've played for. So we do really appreciate your time in regards to this uh, interview that, give, that you've given us. And um, again, we just like to wish you all the very best with the cafe as well. I'm sure that's absolutely booming in Croatia. And if me and Sam are ever anywhere near Croatia, yes. we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have your coffee. Away day in Croatia in Europe next season. Come on, let's have it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's great. Great. Sam, where can everybody listen to this podcast? Links are all in the description. If you're listening on Apple, then uh, hit the five star. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button as well. So from myself, Jonathan Greenwood, my co-host Sam Miller, and today's guest, Mark Paducah, we'll see you all very soon. <laughs>